talk about a crusher. Yes! Oh! Are you kidding me? And oh! Welcome back to Squared Sports Podcast. I'm the host of this podcast, Lane Frank. We now have some 106. That's for 106 episodes through. And I got action packed episode planned for you. The Georgia Bulldogs go, dogs! They just won the national championship. We're in the NFL playoffs, wild card round. Get ready for an awesome Squared Sports game day. We got college basketball, crazy stuff going on there right now. Carlos Korea, resolution. Finally, he's been found. He's going to be a Minnesota twin yet again after the whole Mets saga, Giants saga, Glock on in the NBA. So stay tuned for action pack episode 106. Let's hop into it. Let's start off episode 106. How we always do with the headlines in the NBA. Kevin Durant is hurt yet again. Same time last year, he had a leg injury, was out for a few months. Now, Jimmy Butler falls on him in a game. Same week, same coincidence, kind of gets injured. We, I mean, I think he's going to be out for two weeks, probably more than that. Tough stuff with KD right here. Having one of the best scenes of his career, at least shooting-wise. KD and the Nets have just really been on awesome spark as of late. We'll see how that keeps on going with Kevin Durant out. Steph Curry will return for the Golden State Warriors against the Phoenix Suns. This is a big boost to this Warriors squad. Warriors squad looking on the outside, looking in right now. They kind of need a boost, like Steph Curry getting back, like your MVP getting back, like your best player in franchise history getting back. That'll help the Warriors out right there. Steph Curry going back to add on to Donovan Mitchell's 71-point game. He's still balling out. He's still playing amazing. So, Donovan Mitchell... Looking like one of the best trades to happen in the past few years. I know the Jazz are still playing great right now. Laurie Markkinen, Colin Sex. That's looking like a win-win type of trade because Jazz were in the mood for a rebuild. They didn't want a superstar, and the Cavs needed a superstar. They both got what they wanted. I think it's a perfect deal right now. Perfect match, both these teams right now, with what's going on. Dov Mitchell still on his tear. Anthony Davis, obviously, he's coming back soon from his injury, but can he really sustain it? Anthony Davis obviously can put up some great numbers without LeBron or with LeBron. But then he gets injured. So it's just going to be interesting to see with Anthony Davis. It all kind of seemed like early years in the world. You always got injured. Then it kind of slowed down a little bit. Then when he got to LA, his first season, didn't get injured that much. And that ramps up again and again. He's so injury prone. Lakers got to manage it better. Maybe no more back-to-backs at all. I don't know how it goes right now with the Los Angeles Lakers and Anthony Davis. That's a whole mess we're not going to go into right now. Let's go over to the NFL. We action-packed Week 18 to end out the season. Let's start off with the Saturday night football game. Jaguars versus Titans. Winner. Goes to the playoffs. Loser goes home. And the loser was the Tennessee Titans. Josh Dobbs, credit to him. He played great in that one. But I think Malik Willis still might give you a better boost if you're Mike Vrabel. I hated how Mike Vrabel handled this game. And then Hassan Haskins, even though he's my Michigan guy, did not play well in this one at all. Derrick Henry should have gone more with the workload. You know, he had a lead in the beginning of that game. You're up 10-0 in the beginning of that game. And then you just choke. Trevor Lawrence plays well. Christian Kirk plays well. That offense plays well. That defense plays well. Jaguars probably should have lost this game. Titans had a lot of chance to win this one. They just couldn't come up with it. Jaguars heading to the AFC playoffs. We'll take on Los Angeles Chargers. You're going to pick that game later. Tampa Bay Buccaneers finish out their season 8-9. and nine, And that's a wild thing right there. I got Diddy Note coming up about Tampa Bay Buccaneers later on in the episode. Tampa Bay Buccaneers 8-9. and nine. They lose their season finale. Tom Brady's first losing season to make it to the playoffs. They're going to be facing off against Dallas Cowboys on Monday night. Who that's going to be a fun game. New England Patriots, obviously, they had a chance to make the playoffs. They were able to knock off the Buffalo Bills. They almost did it, but Neem Hines had other plans. Two kickoff returns for touchdowns for DeMar Hamlin. Obviously, great stuff going on there right now. To see him recovering, to see how he's going right now, that's just amazing for Bills Mafia, Bills fans, NFL fans, sports fans all around the world. You see that right there. New England Patriots did not get a win there, though. Bill Belichick says, I'm still going to be back enthusiastically coaching this team in 2023 2024, but we'll see how it goes. Matt Patricia might not be their offensive coordinator. Maybe goes deep into the bag of tricks. Takes on his old back quarterback, Cliff Kingsbury, is his new offensive coordinator. He just got fired from the Arizona Cardinals. Levy Smith just got fired from the Houston Texans. Coaches again fired all around the NFL. I'm going to give my coaches predictions. Next episode kind of ramps up a little bit more. We're going to do hold more full in this week with NFL quarterbacks. Stay tuned for that. Cincinnati Bengals, they got a good win against the Baltimore Ravens. Every chance the Ravens had, the Bengals struck back at them. They play them again this week in Cincinnati. That's going to be a fun game. Houston Texans, they won at the buzzer, fourth and 20. If they don't get Bryce Young, and Bryce Young turns out to be one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, they're going to be talking about that fourth and 20 play forever in Houston. Getting that touchdown, obviously they didn't need it. So interesting stuff right there with the Houston Texans getting that touchdown to win that game for them against the Indianapolis Colts to lose number one overall pick. Hey, Maybe that's why they fired Lovey Smith. I don't know. Miami Dolphins, everybody, they get into the playoffs at 9-8. They don't 
They get over the Pittsburgh Steelers because they obviously have the head-to-head with the Pittsburgh Steelers. But I think right now, I think we're all more confident in the Steelers than we are in the Dolphins. Dolphins, I don't think they're going to have Tua. Skylar Thompson's probably going to be their quarterback. Do you really trust Skylar Thompson in a toe-to-toe playoff game against Josh Allen? I don't. You shouldn't either. Dolphins in a world of trouble right now, but at least Mike McNeil gets to keep his job, and Chris Greer, their GM, gets to keep their job for making the playoffs yet again. Let's go, Dolphins. Steelers, everybody, just talk about them. Mike Tallman will never have a losing season, and I put out a poll on Squirt Sports Twitter, at Squirt Sport, follow that. I said, is Mike Tallman a top 10 NFL coach of all time? I think he is. Never had a losing season. Definitely up for debate right there. Never had a losing season. Mike Tallman, Steelers. Broncos, everybody, obviously, they got a good win to end the season, lowering the Seahawks draft pick a little bit, going from, I think, three to maybe five. Yeah, they get their fifth win of the season. Denver Broncos over the Los Angeles Chargers. Tough the Chargers right there. They lose Joy Bosa and Mike Williams in a meaningless game. Really bad stuff right there by Brandon Staley. Back-to-back years, bad week 18 management by Brandon Staley. We obviously remember the situation last year where they should just tie the game. They went for it, didn't get it. That's why the Raiders made the playoffs. Chargers didn't. They both could have made it. They didn't want to. That's what happened right there. Bad clock management yet again by Brandon Staley. See how Seahawks, they sneak into the playoffs. Quandre Diggs gets a massive interception off Baker Mayfield to get them in the playoffs, eliminate Detroit Lions, even though Detroit Lions eliminated Green Bay Packers on Sunday Night Football. They said, Dan, how do you get your guys up for this game when you're already eliminated? He said, well, we don't want these guys to get in. We don't want the Green Bay Packers to get in. Green Bay Packers did not get in. Obviously, a lot going on with Aaron Rodgers. We're going to talk about that later in the headlines. Get Dallas Cowboys, they lose to the Washington Commanders. Little thing to look for right there, Washington Commanders. Sam Howell played great. Do you fire Ron Rivera? Because Chase Young's situation wasn't handled well this year. Quarterback situation was handled horribly. You start with Carson Wentz, doesn't play well. You go to Taylor Heineke, doesn't play that great. And then you go to Sam Howell, first career game, he balls out for you. So that's an interesting thing right there. Let's move to MLB, where we had the Carlos Correa resolution come to an Oh, it's tough for it as being a New York Mets fan. It's tough. I thought he was a lock to go to the New York Mets. His third team in the past one month it's been, he's signed with 10% of the MLB teams this offseason. Three teams out of 30. A little bit crazy stuff right there. Carlos Correa finally comes to resolution. He's going to the Minnesota Twins, back to the Minnesota Twins. Congrats, Carlos Correa. He got six years, $200 million, but it stings the Mets, man. I read that the Mets might be going after Manny Machado next offseason. I still do believe in Brett Beatty, though, at their base, and Mark Vientos. Don't sleep on him. MLB news right there. Carlos Correa ending up going to the Minnesota Twins. College basketball, no Embiid's left in college basketball. Purdue lost and New Mexico lost the other night in college basketball, so no more Embiid's. Kentucky, again, just blowing the doors off right now. I said they were disgraced. That might have been overreaction right there, but they are very bad this season. I think they can still bounce back. They still have great players. You still have the reigning national player of the year in Oscar Sheboy. You still have top recruit, Casey Wallace. You still have Obi Toppin's brother, Jacob Toppin. You still have a lot of good players. Yep, they still have, I think they still have a chance, but struggling right now after a 27-point loss to Alabama. Chris Beard, everybody, he got fired from Texas after the whole suspension, whole thing going on right there. And then the first game after that, Kansas State, Jerome Tang, they've been balling out right now. They upset Texas Longhorns. Kansas State goes on to beat Baylor on Saturday. They're re-up to number 11 in the rankings right now. Kansas State, Jerome Tang, doing some big things in year one. Obviously, in tennis, we got the Australian Open starting out this week. We're going to talk about that at the buzzer. That's about for the headlines this week. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. All right, Squared Sports fans, it's time for Squared Sports Game Day. Playoffs? Yeah, we're talking about playoffs right here. Like the old Colts coach, you say playoffs? Talking about playoffs? Let's do it. Seahawks versus 49ers. First playoff game of the year. Give me the 49ers. Let's ride. Brock Purdy. Obviously, Brock Purdy, a little bit inexperienced. Pete Carroll said, oh, we have to play the 49ers? I wish we were playing somebody else. Yep, give me the Niners. Very close, though, over the Seattle Seahawks. Don't sleep on Geno. Don't sleep on Geno. Chargers versus Jaguars. Jaguars obviously smoked the Chargers earlier this season in SoFi Stadium. This one's in Jacksonville, TIA Bank Field in Duval. I like the Chargers winning this one still. More talent. I like Chargers. Justin Herbert gets his first group playoff win in his first group playoff game. Seems like Justin Herbert's been in the playoffs before, but no, he hasn't. Herbert. First playoff win over the Jaguars. Dolphins versus Buffalo Bills. I like the Bills to blow the doors off Miami. No doubt about it. Give me the Bills. Giants versus Vikings. Okay. This isn't a bias pick. It's a reasonable pick. Giants went to Minnesota two weeks ago, and they lost on a 61-yard game winner by Greg Joseph. Daniel Jones was banged up in that game. Saquon Barkley was banged up in that game. Giants had injuries all across the field. Well, the Vikings were pretty healthy. Obviously, that's rare to hit a 61-yard field. I don't think that happens in this one. I think the Giants control the game better. They stopped Kirk Cousins better. Obviously, this team's going to make adjustments. It's their second time seeing each other in the past three weeks. So there's going to be adjustments. There's going to be better things that are done by both teams this game. But I think the Giants come out on top. Daniel Jones, first crew playoff win. Let's ride. Go Giants. Into the next round. Divisional round. Let's go Giants. Ravens versus Bengals. My preseason Super Bowl winner was the Baltimore Ravens. 
Cincinnati Bengals played the Ravens once this year, and they lost them, and then they played them last week and killed them. If Anthony Brown plays this game, Bengals are going to demolish them. If Tyler Huntley plays this game, Bengals are going to demolish them. If Lamar Jackson plays this game, the Ravens will win. I think Lamar Jackson plays this game. Let's go Ravens. Roquan Smith, he's got something to play for now. He just won his uh, contract extension. He's going to be playing. So happy in this one. Give me the Ravens. Give me this Ravens defense. Locking down Joe Burrow. Biggest upset of the playoffs so far. Ravens, my bull pick. Over. Cincinnati Bengals. Cowboys versus Buccaneers to round out the wild card round of the NFL playoffs. I'm going to take the Buccaneers, everybody. You play them week one. You win 19-3. to Cowboys have had two losses by over one possession this year. Two losses out of their five losses have been over one possession. Week one against Tampa Bay Buccaneers and week 18 against the Washington Commanders. You're obviously on a cold streak right now with that loss to the Washington Commanders. I think Tampa Bay. Tom Brady does not want to go out with the loss, especially not to at least Dallas Cowboys. He does not want his last game of his career, because this is Tom Brady's last season, I think, to be the Dallas Cowboys. That's not happening. I'm not saying the Buccaneers will win the Super Bowl. I'm not saying the Buccaneers are doing this, doing that. They're going to win this game. You can bet on that. Give me the Buccaneers in prime time. Beating down the Dallas Cowboys. Sean Payton go to the Dallas Cowboys now. What happened to Mike McCarthy? Jim Harbaugh? A lot of things to talk about here. That's about Score Sports NFL Game Day. Leave thoughts and comments. All right, now we got top five. This week's top five is the top five teams in college basketball. Michigan is not up here. Gonzaga is not up here. UCLA is up here, and Creighton is not up here. Those are my four Final Four teams. Yeah, that was a little bit bad Final Four right there. And Duke is not up there in the top five. So here's my top five college basketball teams. Let's hop into it. Number five, UCLA Bruins. With the John Juzang drop-off, everybody thought there would be a massive drop-off when he left. Nothing's happened that much. Peyton Watson obviously left also, but you got Mari Bailey balling out right now. You got Jaime Hawkins balling out right now. You got Tyler Camp, Tiger Campbell playing great. This is a baller squad that Mick Cronin's got going right now in UCLA. Let's go, UCLA. Number five. Number four, Alabama. Alabama can be the best offense team in the country and the worst defense team in the country. That's what's scary about them. But Brandon Miller could be the next Kevin Durant. And that's not joking right there. Brandon Miller... If you don't include Scoo Henderson, if you don't include Victor Wembanyama, he's going number one right now. Brandon Miller of Alabama playing great. Nate Oates, great coach. They just demolished Kentucky. Alabama, number four. Let's roll tide. Number three, Kansas Jayhawks. Obviously, they started the season out there. Head coach Bill Self, him being suspended. They're coming off the national championship, but they got some freshmen. They got Grady Dick. They got Dejon Harris, an experienced player. They obviously lost a lot of players. Dave McCormick, Remy Martin, Oche Baji. We got some good talent this year. Number three, Kansas Jayhawks. Number two, the Tennessee Volunteers. Obviously, started the season with the tough loss to the Colorado Buffaloes. Then you go out and lose to the Arizona Wildcats. But now they're playing great. You got Kai Ziegler, the best six man in the country. Euros Plasvik. You lost John Forkelson, but he's rebounding so well with Euros Plasvik. This is a very foreign type of team. Rick Barnes got a great squad here. His best team in years. Tennessee, number two. Number one, Houston Cougars there by Kelvin Sampson. He could be a camp for the Texas head coaching job. Marcus Sasser, they're playing great. And now Jerace Walker, they're the number one team in the country. Let's go. Houston Cougars, number one. That's about for my top five this week. Now, did you know? Did you know no team has ever won the Super Bowl the losing record? Buccaneers are sitting at 8-9 and nine right now. Now, for all you Brady diehards, Buccaneers diehards, if you want to think you're winning the Super Bowl, you're going to break history right here. Eight and nine Tampa Bay Buccaneers have a chance to break history if they win the Super Bowl. If they win two playoff games, only one team has had a losing record and won a playoff game. That's the 2010 Seattle Seahawks when they were seven and nine and they beat Super Bowl champions the year before New Orleans Saints. Didn't know that? Leave that in the comment section. That's what I didn't know this week. Now, hold them or fold them. NFL quarterbacks edition. Are these teams going to hold on to their quarterbacks? Or are they going to fold them? Let's hop into it. Derek Carr and the Las Vegas Raiders. Fold them. You have the best running back in the NFL this season, at least. Josh Jacobs. You have the best wide receiver in the NFL this season, at least this season. Devontae Adams. You have a great tight end, Darren Waller. You still have some good defense players. And you can't win for anything. It's the quarterback at that point. Derek Carr needs to go. Let's fold Derek Carr. Mac Jones. Hold them. Can't get anybody else right now. Mac Jones, hold them. Okay. Those were two pretty easy quarterbacks to do right there. Obviously, Derek Carr was an obvious, and Mike Jones an obvious. Here's where it gets fun. Aaron Rodgers, hold them or fold them. I'm going to go fold them. This year-long saga, every year, he's getting injured way more now. Obviously, the relationship that building is messed up right now. Take a chance on Jordan Love. Take a chance on another quarterback. Let's go. Aaron Rodgers, gone. This is a Green Bay Packers quarterback. They don't even want him back. Fold Aaron Rodgers. Jared Goff, 
Hold up. Then they call him as a franchise quarterback. Don't even take quarterback this year. He's still young. 27 years old. He's a baller. Former number one overall pick. Showed a lot of potential this year. Jared Goff. Hold him. Justin Fields is an easy one. Hold him. I think he's going to be better than Bryce Young. And he's going to be better than CJ Stroud. Easy holding for me right here. Justin Fields. Hold him. Zach Wilson. You know, this is a very good Jets squad. Very good defense. Very good offense when you have Brees Hall back. Garrett Wilson. Great receivers. Elijah Moore. But the quarterback position is what they need to get down. I don't know how much better Zach Wilson gets. It's a toxic relationship for both. I think maybe Sam Darrell will be better at quarterback for the Jets, even though that will never happen again. Zach Wilson, fold him. Davis Mills, last one. Hold him. Hold Davis Mills for one more year. Make him your starting quarterback for one more year. Why give up so much draft capital to get to number one to take Bryce Young or CJ Stroud when you can literally sit back, take Jalen Carter, take Will Anderson, take an amazing edge rusher, next J.J. Watt, and then wait until next year we can get the amazing difference makers, X-Factor quarterbacks in Drake and Mayer, Caleb Williams, Jason McCarthy. A lot better quarterback class next year than this year. That's my thoughts right there. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. That's powerful. I'm going to fold them. All right, sports, sports fans. We're back with another Fan segment of the week. This week, I got Brett Gray. Obviously, he made the Squared Sports hats. He's on this week. Squared Sports follower, sports fan. Talk about some fan stuff. Let's do it. He's the second fan of the week. All right, Brett, thanks for coming on. First thing I'm going to ask you right here, give me your massive hot take of the week. What's up, Lane? Um, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me on. Um, of course, of course. Like I, like I told you earlier, I don't necessarily consider any of these to be massive hot takes. I think they're all pretty realistic. But my three takes to give you are... Um, University of Michigan football will win the 2023 national championship. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, I agree. The New York Mets will win the 2023 World Series. And Definitely. the Brooklyn Nets will win the 2023 NBA championship. Okay. Sounds good. We obviously got a New York Michigan sports fan here. Obviously, Brett, you go to Michigan. Now I'm a Knicks fan, not really a Nets fan, but I agree with the Mets in the Michigan take. Hopefully, I mean, the cost Korea thing obviously fell through today, but Mets is going to be good next year. And then Michigan, obviously, Quorum coming back. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, for sure. Um, and if I'm being completely honest, I'm not. I don't consider myself a Brooklyn Nets fan. I'm a, okay. I'm a diehard Kevin Durant fan. He's been my favorite player forever. Um, so sense. I'll always support KD wherever he's at. And separate from, like, my bias with liking KD, I just happen to think that the Nets have what it takes. Um, they, they've got a really deep squad this year, and, and I could totally see him winning it all. All right, perfect. So, Brett, you obviously work a lot with the Michigan athletes. Explain, like, Sack the Stigma to the fans, how it works with Michigan and all that. Sure. So, um, I co-founded Sack the Stigma um, with my friend Jared Wangler uh, in October 2021. And so, essentially, Sack the Stigma is an initiative currently based here at Michigan, but we'll be uh, rolling out an expansion plan sooner than later. But we work with the University of Michigan and University of Michigan student-athletes to put together um, different content and merchandise collections that all tie to um, destigmatizing mental health and increasing access to care for student athletes across all college campuses. So um, we, uh, we, we release different merchandise collections and we donate a significant portion of proceeds from every sale to um, supporting University of Michigan's current resources for both current and former student athletes. Um, and and we're soon going to be rolling out plans to bring a very similar model to other schools around the country. Yeah, it's awesome seeing like Fox repost JJ McCarthy wearing like a sack the stigma jersey in the warm up or Mike Sainer still. Yeah, it's just awesome seeing all the Michigan athletes. And then you said maybe other athletes wearing that stuff. Yeah, totally. Um, JJ has definitely been a huge supporter of ours, especially through this strong season that we just that Michigan just had. Um, obviously, making the playoffs, Go he got a lot of. Um, a lot of national attention um, and he was uh, uh, has been a large supporter of ours and has chosen to wear our products before and after a lot of games, which has, you know, caught media attention and whatnot. So huge thank you to JJ for helping Sack the Stigma get to where it's at right now. Awesome stuff. All right. So last thing right here in the fan segment, give me your Super Bowl prediction for this year. Lay it on me. Um, I think the Kansas City Chiefs will beat the San Francisco 49ers. I know that kind of sounds like a pretty mainstream pick. A lot of people might be going with that. I don't see anybody stopping Patty Mahomes in Kansas City. Seems like a fun rematch. Obviously, that's Super Bowl from three years ago. Kansas City versus the 49ers. This one will be Brock Purdy. Maybe, I mean, maybe Jimmy Garoppolo could be back as like a backup in that game. It could be a fun Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes gets a second Super Bowl, cements his legacy as Kansas City Chiefs quarterback, Hall of Fame quarterback. Yeah, that'd be awesome right there. Looking forward to it. 
All right, perfect. Thanks for hopping on, Brett. Of course. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to I'm excited to see it. Perfect. All right, see ya. All right, Squirrel Sports fans, that was the fan segment of the week. If you want to be a fan in an episode, leave your thoughts in the comments. Obviously, you can always reply on Instagram, DM my Instagram. If you want to be the fan segment, next week. Now, College Ball Showcase. Let's talk about what in the world happened last night at the National Championship. This is being recorded on Tuesday. Obviously, you'll see it another day. But Georgia goes up against TCU last night. Monday Night National Championship in SoFi Stadium. Obviously, the hype is there for TCU. Hype is there for Georgia, who's going to come out top. Everybody's saying, oh, we'd love the David. We'd love the underdog. Goliath, Georgia, they're not going to win this one. They almost lost to Ohio State. TCU just beat Michigan, who beat Ohio State by 22. Transitive property doesn't work in sports. I've been told that a lot this week. I think a lot of people have been told that this week because you can say a lot of stuff, but transitive property doesn't work in sports. Just because you beat this team doesn't mean you're better than this team. That's why that site, my team is better than your team, doesn't make sense when Rice is better than Georgia by a combined score of this because it's all fake. That's my thought right there. Georgia is the best team in college football right now. Program-wise, they have so much talent on the field and they rebuild so well. They don't rebuild, they reload. Stetson Bennett, amazing. Just legs, arm power. They do everything they need to do to win a game. Ladd McConkey, great. Brock Bowers, freak, best player in college football next season. Not joking. He's amazing. This Darnell Washington, he's going to be a top pick. So much potential. Six foot seven, defies physics. You have a Reed Gilbert transferred because of Darnell Washington and Brock Bowers. And he was the highest rated Titan recruit of all time coming out of high school. That shows the talent of this Georgia team. That shows they're about no nonsense. They got rid of JT Daniels. They, they said, You don't want to play for us? You're hurt? Kick it to the curb. We're going to stick with Stetson Bennett. You get in a fight with Todd Munkin? We're sticking to the curb. We're sticking with Stetson Bet for the rest of the season. That's what they did. And that's why they won the national championship last season. Now, this season, everybody's saying, oh, they're not going to be great. I don't know where they're getting this narrative that they everybody said they were going 7-5, 6-6, 5-7. Six and six, and that, that never happened. Why are you putting that in your head, Georgia? That never happened, Kirby Smart. Nobody ever said that. I think people were just saying 11-1, 10-2, not a national championship victory, including myself. But Georgia won the national championship this year. They showed focus. Defense is amazing. I went back and I looked at the Orange Bowl highlights from last season. I said... All these guys outside of Stetson Bennett and Brock Bowers are all gone. They're not winning another national championship. Proved to be, all they need was Keely Ringo, Stetson Bennett, and Brock Bowers to win the national championship. They were eating chicken wings in the second half because how much they were up. Worst football game of all time because of the standard it was at. Michigan plays in that game. It's a close game. Ohio State plays in that game. It's obviously a close game. They only lost them by one point. I hate the narrative that if Marvin Harrison Jr. stayed in that game, they would have won that game because offense for Ohio State wasn't an issue. It was more the defense. And there's also obviously a take out there, and now that if Jameson Williams doesn't get hurt and Marvin Harrison Jr. doesn't get hurt, Georgia has no national championships. I think I agree more with the Jameson Williams one because on that last play, on that last draft for Alabama last year, going to be in Georgia, Bryce Young had no one to throw it to. He had no receivers available. Jameson Williams probably would have been available in that situation, so he threw to Keely Ringo, pick six, game over, Georgia national champions. But Georgia, credit's Kirby Smart. Hats off to you. Amazing coach. Amazing coach. I think Michigan beats CCU nine times out of ten. It's a close game in the national championship. Obviously, Michigan did make it. Obviously, Michigan can rebuild next year. Ha State can rebuild. TCU is going to have a bit of a drop off next year without Duggan, without Quinn Johnson, without Travis Hodge Tomlinson. But it's going to be interesting. That's about it for College Ball Showcase this year. Stay tuned, Squirrel Sports fans. All right, Squirt Sports fans, we got the Australian Open starting this Monday. Who's going to win it? Novak Djokovic obviously didn't compete last year, didn't compete in the U.S. Open, well, competed in Wimbledon, won Wimbledon, competed in the French Open, didn't win the French Open, but it's going to be interesting to see how Novak Djokovic rebounds the season. He's going to play in the U.S. Open probably this season, and he's going to play in the Australian Open. But can Novak Djokovic win Australian Open? Let's hop into it. Who is going to be the top contenders in this year's Australian Open? Obviously, Nick Kyrgios, hometown guy. From Australia, he's a chance. Francis Tiafo, we saw he could do on the hard court in the U.S. Open back in August. So it's a pause. He's a great player on hard court, but didn't play that great in the U.S. Open. So he can rebound. Taylor Fritz, he just won the United Cup for the United States, their first ever. So that's amazing for him right there on hard court. Maybe he can win this one. Obviously, Rafael Nadal didn't play U.S. Open, maybe, or did play U.S. Open, got upset by Francis Tiafo. Maybe he can rebound this one. Klaus Alcaraz, who won the U.S. Open, will not be playing this one. I think an undercard right here. The little bit of dark horse. Holger Rune, 19 years old, did great in the French Open, did great in a lot of other tournaments. I think he's a chance. He was the number one teenager when he was a teenager. So he has a chance right here. Holger Rune, amazing pro right now. He says, I think I have a chance to win it. But who's going to win the whole entire thing? 
I don't think Nick Kyrgios can win it because of his attitude. I think he's just, I mean, he's an amazing player, maybe the most talented player you could say of all time. He is so talented, Nick Kyrgios. Most talented player, but can't really use that skill. Doesn't have that type of mentality, in my opinion. Messes around too much on the court. Novak Djokovic, I don't think he wins this one. I think he loses in the final. I think Rafael Nadal, again, losing in the semifinals. The Stefanos sits boss. And I think Stefanos sits the boss. Wins the whole entire thing. Almost won the French Open a few years ago against Novak Djokovic. Had a two-set lead and blew it. But Stefanos sits the boss. The Greek, he wins this one. The Greek freak, he wins this one. Let's go. Sits the boss. Wins the Australian Open. That's about it for At The Buzz this week. I know my tennis. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Now, best for last, question day. This week's question day is, do you think DeAndre Hopkins gets traded? Obviously, there's a rumor that came out this week that DeAndre Hopkins probably will get traded this offseason. Do you think it's going to happen? And who to where? Patriots? Bears? Giants? Jets? Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Where does DeAndre Hopkins get traded? Or does he just stay in Arizona? Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Could Kyler Murray get moved? That'd be crazy right there if they move their franchise piece, Kyler Murray. We're just going to wait and see. Maybe to the Jets. That'd be wild. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. That's about question day this week. That's about for Squared Sports Lane, Frank Epson 106. Thank you for tuning in. Follow Squared Sports on Instagram for sports news and updates at Squared Sports. Follow Squared Sports on Twitter for sports takes at Squared Sports. Follow Squared Sports on TikTok for awesome content at Squared Sports. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and view the best sports content in the world. We'll be back here next week. Epson 107. Stay tuned.